Greetings Lunarians and Brigandine fans. I am your host, Valgus Sonari, back with another Battle Formation Tactics video. This is going to be called the Hex Point Formation. This formation can be used for both offense and defense, but just for the example here, I'm going to show it on defense. As you can see, I got a little castle right here in the middle, and we're going to form around that. As a side note, what I would like to add to these videos from now on are pros and cons at the very end to discuss when you should be using this formation and when you should not. So let's go ahead and start with the castle hex, shall we? I'm going to pick a very tanky unit to be on the castle for this. Since we are doing defense, might as well be as defensive as possible. I'm going to get my paladin right here and put him on the castle. As you very well may know, this will grant a very nice accuracy and evasion bonus, including his tankiness with his shield block capabilities and heavy armor. Not to mention you are looking at a crap ton of counter damage as well. Just to continue the formation, I'm going to grab my sorceress right here, or witch should I say, take your pick. Whatever unit can do a Geno spell should be placed right behind the paladin. I will explain the significance of that after we finish the formation. And right behind her, I'm going to place my healer slash supporting unit. This can be any priest or healer class that is able to cast area heal. Granted, area heals aren't always necessary, but for this formation, it works out perfectly. And I will show you why once it is finished. So those are going to be the leader positions in a straight line. Let's go ahead and form around it. Since this formation is called a hex point formation, you probably can try and guess what I'm going to do is to create a hexagon that comes to a point. The point being my paladin right here on the castle. So let's go ahead and get the meaty stuff done first, shall we? I'm going to pick the proper candidates that can possibly be used for the borders of this formation. This will be including dragons, golems, giants, lizard guards, you name it. We're going to just quickly form around this. Once I'm done, I will let you see the finished product. So here we are with a few examples. Literally any one of these monsters can fit any of these slots. If you have copies of them, please place them around the borders of this hex point formation. I like to have the low mobility monsters ahead in front that have more HP and the high mobility monsters closer to the back that may have some range capabilities. Or if you are on offense, you can use the flying monsters in the back to sweep around and gain some enclosure tactics. And if you happen to have reserve units in the back row like we have here, by all means complete the hex shape all the way around in case one of your monsters does die or they are low on health so they can pull to the back and then you can move these guys to the front. I will say however that these spaces right here need to include monsters that have at least four mobility space movement to make sure that they can reach the front without any trouble. So the rest of the ranks is going to be filled up with magic casters and support users like demons, angels, unicorns, gremlins, and mermaids. Demons and angels work very well on these two hexes right here because we have a ton of capability of using their big bomb attacks like curse and or divine ray in all of the hexes that surround them from two spaces. I will label those right now. Here are the potential hexes that the angel and or demon can hit with curse or divine ray. This will definitely help clear out monsters that are inevitably going to be right here in these spots, attacking your main castle tile with the paladin inside it. While we are on the subject of attacking enemies with magic, let's go ahead and speak about the Geno Frost attack or Geno Flame attack, depending if you have a wizard and or sorceress in this tile right here. As we know, the Geno Frost or Geno Flame moves can reach out to three spaces from the hex that it is cast from. So here are the following hexes that will be hit by that attack if it is cast from this hex right here. As you can see, the Geno spells are going to cover a lot of ground and it's going to be especially useful if the enemy does not have AoE heal capability. You can also feel free to use Holy Word with your healer class from this perspective assuming you are doing well on your health. Or if you were to cross class your healer with a mage, you could also make use of more Genos from that space. That's going to be mostly situational however, you will use this class for mainly healing the entire fight. Speaking of healing, let's go ahead and talk about the cardinal capabilities here and also the other support roles that we have yet to slot in the back three hexes. Any of these three candidates will do. We're going to put a unicorn as an example in the back row right here. We're also going to take an imp and put him back there. And I'm also going to go grab a mermaid. Why not? He's going to go right here to complete the formation. And now we have a fully fledged hex point formation. Doesn't that look pretty? So it's pretty self-explanatory to what the roles are going to be for the unicorn, the imp, and the mermaid. Unicorn is for heals, obviously, and or cures. Imp is for protection, which is really good for the castle hex on the paladin. And also the mermaid is there for support as well to do either spell breaks if you get debuffed, and also do flight support spells if you need more accuracy, etc. One of the best things about this formation, though, is that it's super supportive from this hex right here. 
As we know, the spell Area Heal that comes from the Priest class and or Healer classes from the females will get that spell. Area Heal is able to cast in a 2 hex range radius, which will indeed cover every single tile that is around that middle tile. Since I made a donut without thinking about it, we're going to call this the Healing Donut. Why not? Hashtag Healing Donut in the comments. But let's say, for example, you do not have a Priest class or a Healer class that can do Area Heal. There are other options. So let's go ahead and remove... If we were to say, for example, have another angel, we can put an archangel here or a seraph when they get area healed to have the same effect. Let's say you don't have an angel. Uh-oh. What are you going to do now? Oh, wait a minute. I remember a little tiny tactic I used to pull off in the OG days. Here is a phoenix. Phoenix get an ability called Healing Roar, as you have probably seen. It also has the same effect as area heal. The only difference being the healing power from healing roar scales off of the phoenix's strength stat, while normally it would scale off the intelligence stat from the archangel and or the bishop. So to end things here for today, let's go ahead and talk about the pros and the cons of this formation. By all means, if you think I miss anything on pros and cons, feel free to leave it in the comments below. One big pro is going to be a very good formation for defensive battles. Another pro would be heavy magic damage to the front and both left and right sides. Decent AoE magic damage. Highly supported with AoE heals. And heavily defensive on all sides. Now let's talk about the cons. One big con would be less capable in offensive battles. Another big one would be it falls apart very quickly if you have the need to break formation. And lastly, the formation is less optimal for straight line attacks such as breath attacks. Brigandine fans, I really hope you enjoyed today's guy video. Please leave me a comment below to let me know what your opinions are on the hex point formation. Also, do not forget to drop me a like. It really helps with the channel. And subscribe if this is your first time here and you want to see more guide videos like this, including Let's Play series as well. If you have not caught my current playthrough of Brigandine, you can catch the Mana Silesia Theocracy playthrough in the top right-hand corner. Any more Brigandine resources you want access to, like the Discord server, you can find all that in the description. I am your host, Vakos Lunari. See you on the battlefield, Rune Knights. Peace. Bye.